Hey, what are you doing? First question. Are you a fan of Kurt Ballou's production? I think he gets amazing guitar and drum sounds. Yes, I do. Uh, Kurt Ballou is the guitarist for Converge, but he has also been an audio engineer and producer and all sorts of stuff. He owns God City uh, Studios. He did uh, an Every Time I Die record. He did, he's done a ton of bands, but what I like most about Kurt's work ethic is he just kind of marches to the beat of his own drum. He does his own thing. And he has done a lot for non-mega polished uh, records. He is all about capturing what the band sounds like and the, just the raw tones coming off of the band. And that certainly has a place in a lot of heavy music as well as rock music and things like that. I really like what he does and what he has been doing for many, many years. Uh, he actually has his own uh, uh, drum sample pack now. I believe, but uh, I would love to visit uh, God City Studios at some point uh, in the near future. That would be an unbelievable masterclass in, you know, gear and history and just uh, sound engineering in general. What's the worst pickup you've ever tried in a guitar? Ooh, I, hmm. Okay, I'll preface this by saying I am friends with the guys at Seymour Duncan, and this is just my personal preference because everybody's tastes are different when it comes to tone and guitar stuff, and especially guitar pickups. But I would have to say the Duncan Dimebucker is probably one of the worst sounding pickups I've ever played in my entire life. Um, and, and you know what, and, and bless, Dimebag, and I love Pantera, who doesn't love Dimebag. He did not have the super greatest tone on the planet. Let's be honest, he had a very unique tone, but it was not what I would call super amazing, mind-blowingly awesome. And I think his pickup, you know, maybe, uh, maybe he had lost the high end on his hearing by the time he designed the pickup. I don't know, but it was, it was bad. It was bad. What do you think you'll bring back FAQ Mondays? I don't know, man. Honestly, I'm just not into it anymore. I'm not really feeling it. And uh, the, the timing just doesn't feel right right now. But um, I don't know, maybe in a couple months, maybe down the road a little bit. I have some growing to do as a person. Just got a lot going on in my personal life. And uh, I don't know, I'm gonna bring back uh, FAQ Mondays at some point though, for sure. Can we get a quick rundown on some of the guitar tones on the new Rest Repose record? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the main heavy tone was an Ampete 1 amplifier with no boost. It was the, uh, it was my Balaguer Hyperion, um, the Seafoam green one with the roasted maple neck with the Devin Townsend Fishman pickups. It was uh, that guitar for, I would say 90% of the entire record into the Ampete One amplifier with no boost. It was just using the, the built-in boost that the amp has, but uh, there was no overdrive pedal. There was no nothing. Um, straight into the Torpedo Studio. And that was literally the tone of the record. And I tried a few different amps uh, when we were kind of getting into the process of making the album. And I shot out the Rhodes Gemini, the Ampute One, the Mesa Boogie Triple Crown, and a Dual Rectifier. And I think the Rev Generator as well. I basically shot out every amp I have. And I let the band choose. And it was pretty unanimous. Everyone wanted the amp just because it had that real it's like a modern sound, but it's like a modern vintage kind of a sound, and it just really had the aggression that we kind of wanted to con to convey for the amp uh, for the uh, record. But uh, for the clean tone, that was all actually just built in Logic uh, amp sims. It was uh, it was Logic's version of a Mesa Boogie Mark One amp, I believe. That's what it visually looks like, at least. But yeah, all the clean tones on the record. I mean, there's not a ton of clean tones on the record, but what clean tones there are, um, it's just built-in stock Logic amps. And then for the bass tone, it was my uh, Ampeg Micro VR uh, mixed with the DI of my Jazz Master bass. Um, and Josh was using a Dark Glass B7K, and I just mixed those two and then did some post-processing. I did a bunch of post-processing on the bass, actually. And uh, that was basically the record. The tones came really, really easy. I didn't really have to fight to get anything to sit and it was just uh, capturing it all well at the source and doing not a ton of uh, post-processing. 
And now Fluff reads a tweet. Technically, every mirror is purchased in used condition. My suggestion to you this week is to check out Hosa Edge Cables. I've been playing these for probably the last month or so. They have Neutric ends, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Fluff, Hosa only makes cheap entry-level guitar cables, and you would be right, but they also make really nice high-end cables as well. Uh, these are really high quality. Uh, most of, uh, actually all of the band, Rest Repose, has been using these. We switched over about a month ago, and these are actually really incredible. And my buddy Bo from Salesin has recently switched. Um, Pixie Licks, my buddy Pixie Licks has been uh, using these as well. They're just they're really nice cables. And I thought you guys should check them out. I'll put the links down below in the description. You and wonderful Ivan Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.